I am back and I would like to share with you how to create a reference list at the end of your paper using the APA style latest format which is the 7th edition. Once again, the APA format is the official style of the American Psychological Association. Your references contain all of the sources you have used in your paper, so readers can easily find what you have cited and you can find it on the last page of the paper. Your entries here must be arranged in alphabetical order. The reference page has elements. In terms of the punctuation, use a period in between reference elements. Use commas to separate parts of an element and capitalize the first letter of the titles, subtitles, and proper names. Then, identify the author. The author is the person or group responsible for creating, writing, or editing the content of a work. Also, look for the date your source was published, and then the title of the work being cited. It can be from a standalone book, journal, website, or report, or it can be from a part of an article or chapter. Lastly, the source. It is where readers can retrieve the work cited. It can be a journal, website, or a publisher. Remember that URLs and DOIs are presented both as hyperlinks, so it is not necessary to include retrieved from anymore in writing your source. All references in your list must be double-spaced both between references and within references with a hanging indent of half an inch for references with more than one line. For books by a single author, write the author's last name first and then the first and middle initial separated by a comma and period. Then the year of publication, open and close parentheses, period again. The title of the book in italics, period again. Lastly, the publisher's name and then end it with a period. As you can see, all of the elements are separated with a period. Proper capitalization is also observed. Take note that in writing the title, only the first letter of the title is in capital letter. The rest of the letters must be small and italicized. For books by two or more authors, begin with the author's surname, comma, then the initial of the author. Use the end symbol, then write the surname and initial of the other author. Then follow the guidelines I mentioned in writing the rest of the reference details. For books with more than two authors, use et al period, a Latin phrase which means and others. Do not be confused on whose name will appear in your reference entry in cases where there are more than two authors. It is always the main author or the main proponent's name which should be there in the entry. The other authors can be represented by et al. For books by a corporate or group author, replace the name of the author by the group or the organization's name. In this case, American Sociological Association, period, 1975, inside the open and close parentheses, and then just follow the guidelines in writing the rest of the details. For edited books, insert ed, period, after the name of the author. Ed means editor. If an entire edited book with author chapters is cited, the editor is listed as the author with the abbreviation ed period after his name, or ed's period if there are multiple editors. For books with no author indicated, begin with the title of the article and then write the rest of the available details of the reference entry. You can also use ebooks as your reference in writing a paper. Ebook or electronic books are as good as books which you can read entirely online. The rules in writing an ebook as a reference entry is similar to the rules in book reference entry. Here, there is what we call the DOI or the Digital Object Identifier. The DOI is a unique alphanumeric string that identifies content, 
and provide a persistent link to its location on the internet. There is a DOI when the article is published and made available electronically. The DOI should be placed after the publisher's name and must end with the period when cited. For books without a DOI, you may write it similar to how you enter books in a reference list. In this case, there are three editors of the ebook, no publisher indicated. For ebooks from a website, place the website's name and then the website link after the title of the article. For chapters in books, begin with the author's name, for example, Levi Strauss, C. in 1971. Then the title of the article, Totem and Cast, the contributor or editor's name, F. E. Katz. This time, the name begins with the initial of the first and middle name, then the surname. It follows the name of the book. Indicate the pages where the article can be found, for example, pages 82 to 89, and then the publisher, which in this example entry is the Random House. For an article entry or chapter from an online reference book with DOI, begin again with the author's name and publishing year, the title of the article, the contributor or editor's name, the online reference book, the publisher's name, and then lastly, the DOI. While for an article entry or chapter from an online reference book without a DOI, the format is similar. If you can also indicate the volume and pages where the article came from, it would be better. Now, for ERIC documents, the format is similar as well. You have to include the ERIC number. In this example, the ERIC number is ED581571. Try using this ERIC number in searching for the article online and it will lead you to a paper entitled an Evaluation of Champs for Classroom Management ERIC or the Education Resources Information Center is an authoritative database of indexed and full-text education literature and resources. It is sponsored by the Institute of Education Sciences of the U.S. Department of Education and an essential tool for researchers of all kinds. ERIC documents include papers, dissertation, guides, and selected books relating to education practice and research. They are listed with accession numbers starting with capital ED. For journal articles, they are listed with accession numbers starting with capital EJ. You may also include the link of the ERIC document. For journal articles with DOI, the title of the journal should be in italics. It is followed by the publishing journal, the volume or the issue numbers, page numbers, then the DOI. For journal articles without DOI or in print, the publishing journal in italics, the volume or issue numbers, then the page numbers. For online newspaper articles from a database, begin with the writer's name, then the date when the article was written. You have to be specific in terms of the date. Begin with the year, comma, month, and the date, the title of the article, and the name of the newspaper in italics. For online newspaper articles with no author, you may begin with the title of the article, then the date, the name of the newspaper, and make sure to include the link where it can be visited. For printed newspaper articles, the format is the same, but here you have to include the page number where the specific article can be found. For a magazine article, either print or from a database, you have to be specific with the exact date the article was written, then the magazine name in italics, the volume or issue number, then the pages where the reader can find it. For a magazine article from a website, insert the link of your source in the reference entry after the magazine name. For websites with author, follow the format as discussed earlier. Be specific with the date, then place the website at the end of the reference entry. For websites with organization name as author, begin with the organization, then the date. 
If you really cannot find the exact day the article was published, you may just put there the publishing year and month. End it with the link of the website. For websites with no author and no date, begin with the title of the article, replace the date with the abbreviation n.d. which stands for no date. For blog posts, which you can find in websites, it is easy to look for the exact date since the date blogs were written are always indicated before the blog content. End the entry with the link of the blog post. In general, blogs are considered unreliable scholarly sources because many are strongly opinionated and can lack the professionalism expected in a scholarly source. You may use blogs if you are looking for opinionated literature, but as much as possible, try to look for other more reliable sources. There are also other sources that you may need to include in your reference list. It can be test reviews online. Here, you have to enclose in brackets the title of the test review, for example, Review of the Test Assets, a survey of students' educational talents and skills, its editor's name, and the book where the review came from. You may also need to include charts, tables, and graphs on your reference list. Begin with the word notes, period, from, the title of the article where you got the specific chart, table, or graph, by the name of the authors, the publishing year, the publishing journal, volume or issue number, and page number. Copyright, the year by the authors, reprinted with permission. Of course, you have to get the permission of the authors before putting the data in chart, table, or graph on your own paper. There may also come a time or an instance where you may need to include video DVD or VHS on your reference list. You have to begin with the director's name, the year it was shown publicly or produced, the title of the film, then indicate the format if it is a DVD, CD, VHS, or the like, then the distribution company. If the media content is from a database, Indicate who or what organization the producer is, the year, title of the film, film format, streaming video, and the distribution company. If the information is from a website like YouTube, indicate who is the presenter of the video, whose channel the content belongs to, the date it was uploaded, the title, indicate that it is a video, the name of the website, and the website link. If the source is a dissertation or a thesis, include the publication number. If it is a doctoral dissertation or a master's thesis, then the university that published the work, the online database or publishing company may also be included if available. You may also use personal communication or conversation as a source. In your entry, there should be the name of the person who made a remark that you quoted. Indicate that it was a personal communication and the exact date the communication took place. That is all. I know that there are a lot of points to remember, but just like any other skill, reference listing needs practice too, especially that it changes format from time to time. By the way, here are my references. Until our next video, thank you for watching!